in here we have people live in the Friendship Center. Um, so you all can see. Oh, can't see much here. Here we are live. Everybody is finishing up their dinner. And say hi to the tech crew. Caitlin and Annika and I are all sitting here in the back, and we are going to get started here in a few minutes. Hey Marilyn, how are you? I saw the Warrens are on. How's everybody doing tonight? I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I would first off love to say that this is our first time doing this, as you know. So there may be some hiccups along the way. <laughs> and we just ask that you bear with us as we're going through it all. And um, we'll iron out all the bugs as, things, um, as we get going through the year. But carefully, we will all be back together soon. Hello, everybody. Oh, the volume's low. Thanks, Mel. Okay, I just turned it off. Well, we're going to get dinner after. Please eat later. Is it good? Better? I know it's really loud in here at the moment, so that could possibly be it. Well, though, we kind of see how things go tonight. But we're excited that you guys are here. Um, I'm excited to be a part of this night and to see everyone and hear about. Oh, we're going to get started, so I'm going to turn it around. If you have questions, you can go ahead and type them and I'll answer them. I got my little dinner there. Come on in and find a seat. I know you like to see me. See if you just said it in. Because that's what I do. Up 
on a replay. So all of the videos that we take will be uploaded to the church's um, YouTube channel. So you can participate in base camp however it works for your family this, this year. So the first Wednesday of the month we'll be doing a teaching lesson here. Your kids have the option of um, having their own teaching in the building as well. So in a little while, we'll demonstrate that. Um, your kids will have the ability to stay here and actually all of the adults are gonna travel down to the sanctuary for the, their teaching portion. And then we'll join back up at the end um, to pray together, to hand out our awesome boxes and supply kits, um, and then leave. Um, <laughs> and then, so after the first Wednesday of the month, the next couple of weeks, most of the time it's going to be two weeks in between, but there is the occasional fifth Wednesday of the month, so there will be three weeks in between. Um, you have the ability to participate in base camp however works for your family. We're calling it the Choose Your Own Adventure uh, edition. Because, I don't know, with a church named Life or Adventure of Faith, you have to work in like living the adventure, choosing your own adventure, going on an adventure as many ways as you can. So, <laughs> um, Jojo doesn't agree with that, but he thinks it's too cheesy. <laughs> um, so the next few weeks, you will have your box over there, which Candice is going to talk about later, and you'll get a field guide in that box and supplies that go with it. So Candice will dig into that more later, but... I wanted to show you the field guide real quick because this is like your road map, your field guide for while you're in the field, at your homes, at your friend's house, um, wherever you're choosing to do this, with whoever you're choosing to do it with, whether it's just your family or another group. Um, speaking of, if you don't have people to do it with yet, um, and you let us know that you need some help connecting with other families. We are still working on some of those connections. So if you haven't heard anything, bear with us. We're still working on that. Um, Candace is helping coordinate all of those connections. So that's coming. Um, what else? Okay, so then you've, you've gotten together with your family or your groups of people and you've done whichever activities out of here you want to do. Um, and then the last Wednesday of the month is like our fun week. So this came about because when we, when we were doing base camp last year and we had to stop in March, whatever that was, um, we started doing these fun events. So we would pick a theme and we gave out supplies and we had a Facebook Live, and we did these like super fun events. Um, so that's where this, and it was it was cool because there was like this fellowship and connection aspect, even though we weren't all together. So that's what we'll kind of be doing the last Wednesday of the month. There's a fun activity. Um, we'll have a live post doing that online, so your group can either choose to join us online, which we hope you will, or you can watch the replay, or just do the activity yourself because all the directions and supplies are in there for you to do at whatever time you choose. And that's kind of the overview of base camp. There's a theme every month, so if you haven't heard it yet, our theme for October um, is joy. So I'm really excited that you guys are going to dig into that, that I'm going to dig into that too, what joy really means, what joy really looks like how we can participate in joy even in hard or sad times. Um, it's going to be cool. And so every month there will be a theme and we'll just keep going. And we're excited about it. So are there any questions? Yes, Michelle. Um, someone from Facebook Live is asking when they can um, pick up their boxes if they are not here. Thank you, because I meant to tell you that. Um, so if you are not here, your boxes are available starting tomorrow. Uh, you can stop by the church. Um, any day the church is open, you can pick them up on Sunday. Um, or if you, for some reason, need help with that, you just to deliver them, please shoot myself or Candace a message 
um, or an email, and we'll get those to you. I think that covers it. So they're available tomorrow. And I know it will probably be repeated later too, but the boxes are designed for one per group. So not necessarily one per family, um, but one per group. There's enough supplies in there that you should be able to expand upon, even if there's a couple of families involved. Uh, any other questions? All right. So, next, we're going to move into the teaching portion of the evening. So if your child is going to participate in the kids' program, they are actually going to stay right here in this room. If you want to take your children with you, you're more comfortable with them to stay with you, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, but the kids program will stay in this room. And then all the adults are going to walk down to the sanctuary. Oh, and there's a nursery option. So if you have children three and under, you are welcome to wrap them up. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So, if you are teenagers, teenagers, you're considered adults in this scenario. So you are I'm answering some more questions out here, but I am going to get to your, um, to your question, Mel. So, Mel Holland asks um, if the email for the person putting the groups together is Candace. And yes, you can um, email Candace at faithadventure.com or you can email. Sam um, at Samantha at And I will double check those email addresses just to be 100% sure, but that is, um, that is what they should be. So we are going to get ready and put the mask on and we are going to walk down to the other end uh, for the teaching time. And if you guys have any questions, go ahead and just ask me while we're walking as well. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everybody's laughing about this. <laughs> okay, sorry for the technical issues there. <laughs> I hope you're all at home laughing. Uh, Cause yeah. <laughs> if I can get down here without turning myself. Oh, thank you. Okay. So we are walking on down to the Friendship Center. And I'm gonna switch around so that you can... <laughs> Thanks, Irene. <laughs> you know I picked the wrong techie person. I just want to show you the kids really quick. Hey everybody, can you guys say hi to the people on Facebook Live for us? Say hi! Hello! Hello. Can I say something to the people yes. on Facebook Live? Facebook Live people, if you have kids at home, I am recording my teaching that I am doing right now. So you guys are going to be able to watch in there what's going on with the adults, but the kids stuff will be posted to YouTube later if you want your kids to go back and watch it. Thank you, Kelly. All You're right, welcome. so we are walking on our way down. Okay. So, uh, Let's turn this back around. Thank you. I like the bee masks too, Irene. Hello, we have more friends coming. <laughs> okay, I will tell them. I'll tell them when I come back. Kelly's got them wrangled now, so. <laughs> so we are walking, walking. I hope everyone is having a wonderful first part of their week and have enjoyed this nice weather. Andrea, I will tell Kelly that you said thank you for that, um, for the recording. So she is planning on doing that so that the kids at home can watch. And the kids seem very excited <laughs> to be back together. So that is good. Oh, I just heard CJ say he was going to admit something embarrassing, but 
I don't think he said it. <laughs> okay. So come on. Here's Corey. You want to say hi to the Facebook Live people? I can't see her, so I kept walking. This. I kept trying to tell myself to stop, but I wouldn't be answering. Okay. Sorry. I'll turn you around. Did you want that little table? Nice. All right. I want to wait a couple seconds. I don't know. Is everybody here, Sam? Or? I don't know. Okay. Yes, they are. No. No. Okay. Hi, Ashley. Hi. I feel like there's a lot of teenagers in here. Good, we're going to learn biblical Greek today. Thank you, Leah. Are we good now? Can I start now? Yes. All right, so this week's uh, focus is joy. This month's focus is joy. How many of you are feeling joyful? Woohoo! Yeah. Come on. That was pretty weak. How would we describe joy in our culture? When we were to, if we were to talk to somebody that we said, oh, they, they look like a joyful person, how would we describe it? What would it look like? Holler it up. Not sad. Not sad Santa Claus, okay? Not sad. <laughs> Not sad, right? But oftentimes it's like we describe it like a feeling, don't we? So we say like a feeling, or we might call it like happiness. Oftentimes it's dependent on circumstances. Like uh, I was gonna, I didn't do this, but I was gonna like get ice cream for everybody. We can't really give out food right now, but I was gonna get ice cream for everybody because no one can eat ice cream and not be filled with joy, right? Or at least our American definition of of what joy means. Um, but it's dependent upon our circumstances, and it's also fickle because our circumstances are uh, changed so often. So oftentimes, uh, if we're feeling joyful one moment, but we get stuck in traffic or cut off in traffic, suddenly we're not joyful anymore because it's very dependent upon circumstances. Now, there's a lot of words. I was going to like present all the different words for joy, but there's a lot of them in Hebrew. In fact, there's tons of them, like 24 or something, which is weird. Because in Hebrew, oftentimes there's like one word, like nephesh means throat, like that's one of the words in, in Hebrew that it means throat. Um, but it also means soul, it also means wind, it also means life force, it also it's like, means a bunch of different things. So normally in Hebrew, one word means a bunch of things, but for joy, there is a lot of Hebrew words that describe joy, which is kind of interesting, and they're all circumstantial. But the Greek word for joy is kara. Can you say kara? All right, kara, joy, okay. Charis is rejoice. Rejoice, you see the joy words in there, charis. Okay, so you learned your Greek today. Well done. Now, what's weird about this word is it's one, it's used a ton in the New Testament, and it's used in a ton of different ways. So we're going to have arts and crafts, and here's one rule. You cannot make fun of my art, okay, because I'm going to make some art. So the oftentimes in the New Testament, you have, I'm not going to even try to draw him. I'll just put him in the sky and say, this is God. Cool? Oftentimes, God is referred to as a character trait of God as being joy. So the, it'll be used there, like in John 15, 10 and 12, it talks about God being filled with joy. Now, what's also true, though, is the things God does. So, like, um, what's something God did in the Old Testament? Give me something. Anything. Created the heavens and the earth. Created the heavens. Okay, here we go. <laughs> How do I draw that? Okay. Um, um, stars, moon. Sea and here's the land. Okay, cool. Good job. So, what's interesting is in the, in the New Testament, this would be talked about. Chorus would describe the thing he created, but also the fact that he did it also describes joy. Okay, so this can be described. The doing, the verb, is described as being joy filled or it's he joy it. It's weird. It's it's a weird word. And then the things he created were also described as joy. Something weird. People. Okay? People got created. Um, dress? Okay, that's inaccurate for Adam and but okay. Um, anyway, um, so people can be described too. They, they can bear the character trait of being joyful. They, they can be joyful people. And God, they can respond to God's gifts in joy. With me? And then God also responds to their gifts with joy. When they respond in joy, He responds in joy also. 
Uh, he can give gifts. God gives gifts. Mm -hmm. That's a gift. Okay, God gives gifts. And the, the thing itself is considered joy, as well as the uh, giving of that gift. Does that make sense? Okay, that's not it. It also keeps going. It can keep drawing more and more. The results of us expressing our joy and making other people joyful is joy, joyful, and we see people rejoice because of the joy that they have in their hearts. You can see this word gets used a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton. And in the scriptures, it's used all of these different ways. Um, and I think the reason they are used is because God's Spirit sustains all that exists. So it describes God and His actions. It's an emotion. It is an emotion. It's like happiness. It is like happiness. But it's also an action. It's a gift. It's an experience. And it also describes who we're called to be. We're called to be a joyful people. And that doesn't mean plastic smile happy. You can actually be filled with joy and not smile. Um, in John 15, 10 through 12, Jesus uses the word in very different ways. He says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy, character, action, or being, may be in you, and that your joy, emotion, thoughtfulness, response, may be full or complete. So it's almost looked, it's almost better to look at like what joy isn't involved in, like it is involved in everything, because everything reflects, reflects its, its creator. You with me? Weird word, right? Really, really weird word. So um, if there are things that joy doesn't include itself in, things like injustice, things like hatred, things like violence against innocence. Joy is a condition of living, abiding in the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's reflecting God's character regardless of circumstances, and that's our theme this month. So what we, what our, our theme statement is that joy is rooted in who God is. It is not fleeting or based on circumstances. Jesus is the source of all joy, and living in harmony with the Spirit produces joy. Do you notice our Trinitarian approach here? Um, so as we talked about last Sunday, we cannot force ourselves to be joyful. Have you ever tried to? Like been in a bad mood and tried to will yourself to be happy? How did that go? Not well? No. You can't do it on your own. Can, can you do it? Can somebody do it? Can you will yourself to be happy? Maybe if you just buy an ice cream, maybe that's how you do it. But joy is a gift of the Spirit. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. So how do we produce joy in our life? It's an attribute of the God we believe in. It's a gift we receive that comes through Christ's work, and it, it's the expected appreciative response of God's people. It's the feeling of a glad emotion and the cause of it. People are created in God's image, gifted with salvation, and blessed more than we deserve in this life, aren't we? We're called to be a joyful people, and, and though many barriers try to destroy that joy, um, it says that the Holy, uh, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to reorient our focus. We must fix our eyes on who our God is, what He has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. Now, is it not breaking the rules if I ask you to turn to your neighbor and say something? I don't know if that's a rule. I'm sorry, COVID, sorry. I broke it. So what I want you to do is I want you to think for a minute. Any teachers in here? Remember think, pair, share? No? Okay. I want you to think for a minute, because sometimes we forget that God is working right now, and especially during this time period with COVID and all the other things, it kind of can feel like God's turned his back and he's not present. But he is working. So I want you to think for a minute of one thing that you've seen God do during this time period in the last six months. What is something God has done in spite of all that's going on? Think about it. Get it in your head. Okay. Now share it with somebody close to you. Go. Family time. Yep. Something God has done in the last six yep. months. All right, how many of you 
here were able to come up with something God has done in the last six months that you've seen? Nobody. Okay. Just kidding. Thank you for raising your hands. All right. Cool. It's very hard to see, actually, because, again, the reflection. But, uh, yeah, God has been working, and that's what our focus is going to be all month. So all month, every all the activities that we do in this box that Candace is going to go through later, there are going to be a bunch of different activities, and all of them are trying to help us to reorient our thinking, reorient our eyes, fixing them on God so that they might bring us joy, because he's the source of joy. You with me? So our, our mission this month is to focus on the source of our joy and be joyful. There we go. Okay? That's our mission this month. So that's what we're going to be working on. Again, don't cart horse this thing where you move the cart in front of the horse and try to be joyful. We're going to focus on the source of our joy, and the byproduct will be being joyful. So remember, joy is a contingent upon positive circumstances. It could rain all month. We're still going to experience joy. It is a contingent upon good things happening to us. Uh, we're called to be joyful in the Lord always. Paul said, uh, when we were in house arrest, he said, Rejoice, be full of joy in the Lord always. Again, I'll say rejoice. That's Philippians 4.4. 4. Uh, one of the cool, like, extra credit homework assignments in the field guide is to study the book of the feeling, uh, Philippians. Has anyone read that book before? Four chapters. Or it's a really easy read. Great book. Okay? That's, that's the, they call it sometimes the... Uh, the joy novel or something. I can't remember what the term is they use for it now. Um, but it's a really great book, and, and that's one of the, the options for this, this month is to spend some time doing that. So um, we're supposed to recall to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So that's always. That's our encouragement, and that's our focus this month. Any questions about joy before we move on? No. What's the Greek word for joy? Kara. Kara. Nice job. Very cool. Okay, Cara, that's all. I, mean, I feel like I taught you something. That's my, my test question at the end. All right, so I'm going to pray, and then we're actually just going to move on back. So this is, right, Sam? Am I too short? Maybe. Yeah. For once, you went short instead of long. I told you I would be short. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me pray, and then we can check in with Callie and see where we're at. All right, let me pray. Father God. Uh, during these times, sometimes it can feel difficult with all the, uh, our world's going through a lot of topsy-turvy things. It feels upside down sometimes. It feels crazy. It feels like every time we turn on the news, there's nothing but bad news, nothing but separation, nothing but uh, just difficulty with our fellow man. We can't seem to have a conversation about anything without arguing and fighting. And it can just feel like such a heavy time. So we're taking some intentional time this month, Father, that you have told us that we we're called to be a joyful people, that as we abide in you, that we will be filled with joy, Father. And uh, we, we are pushing our chips in on that. We are, we, are, we are believing in your word, and we're choosing to reorient our eyes this month, to refocus on you. You are the source of our joy, not our circumstances, not our situations, not the things we can or cannot do, the things we're forced to do. Um, you are our source of joy. I pray that this month that you would work in our families, that you'd work in our friendships, that you'd work in our small groups, that you'd work in base camp, and honestly, Father, that you'd work in our church and all of our cities and communities as well. That we might be a joyful people, that we might reflect your character to everyone that we meet. Thank you, Father, for this time to pause and reflect. Yes, base camp looks so much different. There's, there's some of us that are having a hard time with that and, and mourning what, what we missed and and what we'd like to get back to, Father, but I pray that this month would be an opportunity to focus solely on you, the reason that we do base camp, the reason that we do church. I just pray that we keep our eyes fixed on you and that you would fill us with your joy. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do now. Tell jokes? I don't have any. Sorry. Can you juggle? Well, I can juggle. I'm not going to juggle. Do you have a question, Michelle? Yes, sir, I do. I have a question from Facebook. So, um, Kara, as in, so as in beans, we are characters, so joy-filled beans? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a really weird word because you can't pin it down to like a part of speech. It's really frustrating. In fact, let's, uh, want to learn a cool vital fact or no? Yeah. Do we have time or do we have to go? No, we have time. Okay, so cool vital fact. Kara is related, actually can also be translated as gift. And so uh, in the ancient world, um, we, when you get a gift from somebody, are you really just going to listen to me talk and let me talk about whatever I want until we can go? Is that really what's going to happen right now? Okay, so, captive audience. 
Welcome to nerd them. Okay. Uh, so Kara, in the ancient world, getting a gift is not like it is today. So like, for instance, when you get a gift today, uh, we consider the best type of gift is a gift that's given without any attachment. No strings, you didn't earn it, it's not, um, it's not something that there's anything expected in return. It's like, out of my free will, I've given you a gift, and you receive it, and that's it. That's, and that's the most altruistic gift. We look at that and see that as being like the best part. But uh, in the ancient world, that was completely unheard of. In fact, if you read the New Testament with that in mind, just knowing that they wouldn't think of it that way, you'll read it very differently. Because you'll see that when they talk about like re the receiving the gift of God's grace, immediately Paul falls things, follows things up with saying what? Our expectations after he gives you the gift. Now we would say, those are strings attached. That's not a free gift. That's not a good gift. No, it was a hospitality culture. It was an expectation that when you gave, you would receive. And it was this community building aspect. And so when Jesus died for our sins, if, not, if we sometimes will fight about this in our modern, like, Western culture, we say, uh, you know, that's the gift is free. I receive, which it absolutely is. By the way, it is absolutely free. However, the expert then they go, well, is it works or is it faith? And we, we, we fight about it. But the ancient world are like, no, that, those are the same. They all fit together. Like that, that's an expect, expected thing that would happen. Now, does that mean that your works get you to heaven? No, no, you get the gift. But there's an expected like. You'll, you'll, you'll respond in kind. You'll do things, you'll extend that gift to others, which is why we're blessed to be a blessing. God gives us gifts that we might bless others. And that's just the hospitality culture. We've kind of lost sight of that. So kara is like this joy that we get from receiving this gift from God and then extending it to others. Kind of a cool, is that cool to anybody else or just me? Okay, just me, that's okay. Right. You just clap for your dad, you might get a cookie for that. All right. What else about you, Sam? Other cool Bible facts? Yeah. Random Bible trivia? Can we whatever we want about the Bible? You can try. I, I won't promise any answers. What, Sam? What was your favorite thing that you found while you were preparing for this lesson? This one? Yeah. Hmm. I think I just shared it, the gift thing. Because I had to research the gift thing. It was kind of hard. You had to do a little archaeological. Oh, are you talking about thumbprint? No, no, I can't talk about that one. I mean, I can. It has nothing to do with this at all. It has nothing to do with this. Okay, so then, you have a real question? You need to um, repeat the question, please, so that we can hear it. Yes, so many the answers question the question was, what was the most interesting thing that I found while studying for this? Um, I think Sam's alluding to, there was something I got off on a nerd tangent a while ago. I'm embarrassed. Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, what is his name? The Book of Jeremiah. Who wrote the Book of Jeremiah? Jeremiah. Ah, true question. No, Baruch wrote it. If you read it, Baruch wrote it. It says it was written by Baruch. Remember it was thrown in the fire and they had to rewrite the whole thing again? Do you remember that? Actually, it says he rewrote the words of Jeremiah and other books, okay? Uh, Baruch is, was an author, okay? Uh, really cool archeological fact. I'm not sure how I stumbled on that doing this study. I think I was looking up Hebrew words for joy. Um, when they would write these on scrolls, they would roll them up and then they'd put like wax seals on them and they'd seal them with a term that said Baruch or something on it. Well, we found one, these are really small, they're all over the ancient world, but uh, they found one that had Baruch's seal on it and it was really cool and they were all excited. And then when they transported it to the museum they were looking at, they actually saw that on the edges they had these ridges and they were really concerned. So they started looking at these ridges. What we have in this little tiny thing are the fingerprint of Baruch when he pressed it in. His fingerprints of a biblical author. We have the finger... Okay, no one else is getting excited about this. <laughs> fingerprints of a biblical author that we can see. How cool is that? Like CSI for the Bible. That makes me really nerdy. Sorry. That's kind of cool, no? The dude wrote the Bible, or part of the Bible. You didn't write part of the Bible? <laughs> Just kidding. This is really outside of my comfort zone, Sam. <laughs> Ashley! Uh, coming back to Joy, if yes. you that we're going to explore this more over this next month, um, the Joy, you know, we receive from God, so we seek Him and, and according to how He calls us, to Him and, and to people He brings. But could you, could you speak to what the Bible says? Of the world and how to 
Can you repeat the last part again? I'm sorry, I just didn't catch it. And then I'll repeat it for the thing. Yeah. I don't know. Which part is the last part? <laughs> I didn't hear it, so I can't repeat it. You're saying, like, what, what are things so that you're not going through the motions, but, like, things that to connect to the actual heart and spirit to having that heart and spirit of joy when you're, when you're dealing with, like, internal or, you know, spiritual struggle in general, or just struggle of the world. Totally. Oh, okay. So I think I get it, and I'm going to say it, and if I'm wrong, say it. Stevie, you're wrong. That's all I said. So I'm putting my words up, because I'm not good at memorizing. Yeah. So what she's asking is, like, is there a time when your heart and your mind are kind of disconnected, like, and you know mentally that you're supposed to be joyful, you recognize who your father is, you know who he is, you're, you're doing your spiritual disciplines, maybe even, but in your heart you're still feeling a heaviness because of circumstances, because of things you've experienced, because of what have you. Um, how do you walk through that biblically? Like, how, how does the Bible call us to walk through that um, in those times? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So, um, more Bible nerdery. Okay, ready? So, you know, there's no, there's no Hebrew word for brain in, in the Bible. There's, there's just, they have no thought. It's like, Levav is the heart, like, and it's where you make decisions, and your heart kind of. Um, and Greek, they added the mind because they had a brain for it, or a brain for it, a word for it, but, uh, it all was like connected. There was like they would never say. Have you ever heard the Christian phrase the um, like you 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 know something, but it needs to make the the ten inches move down to your heart or something? You ever hear that? That's a, a kind of an unheard of Greek idea. They would just say, no, that's they're the same. You can't feel things that you don't think. Does that make sense? Like they kind of are interconnected. They also use the word splechna, which is my favorite uh, Greek word, one of my favorites. It means like guts, like you make your decisions from your guts. Um, so. To, I'm bringing that up because I think that the hard part is when we look at joy and when we describe joy in an English or a Western context, we think of joy as looking a certain way. It looks like someone smiling. It looks like someone happy. It looks like um, somebody who is just okay with everything. Everything's going great for them. Plastic smiles. And um, But biblically, that's not how joy looks. Um, there's lots of, can you think of situations, I'll ask you, situations in Paul's life, we talked about joy a lot, what are some situations in Paul's life where he wouldn't be filled, you wouldn't expect him to be smiling and happy? Prison. Yeah, he's in prison a lot of times, okay? Um, you know the ancient prisons, a lot of them were stacked. You ever heard that? So they'd be like, one level, there's like a cell, and then another cell, and then a cell, and then a cell, and they'd be buried in the ground, so they'd be like really going. Now, when you go to the bathroom, where do you think that goes? Cool, so you want to be in the top. <laughs> Anyway, no, but that's where he's written from. That's where he'd write from. So there was in house arrest. Sometimes he was threatened with death. He was beaten a bunch of times, wasn't he? Left for dead, right? Um, do you think Paul smiled all the time? I, I don't think he did. Did Jesus smile all the time? Let's, let's set the bar really high. Did Jesus smile all the time? Can you think of times when Jesus wept? Oh, yeah. Lazarus. Right. Does that mean Jesus wasn't filled with joy or not connected or not abiding with the Father? No. I don't think so. Do you? I mean, you can argue with me. I think joy looks different. Joy is faithfulness in sorrow. Does that make sense? Uh, when, when Jesus, to me, again, this is just my opinion. You guys can disagree with me. But, because um, we're doing this together, right? I'm doing this joy study with you guys. We're all, we're all in this together. Um, but the idea here is that we focus our eyes on Jeez, I had a heart attack two weeks ago. Do you know what I was thinking about in the, in the other room when I'm holding my daughter in the back of the room when she's saying no to Sam, everything Sam says? It's that I wasn't sure I was going to be here holding that little girl. Not, it's a heavy thing. But God is good and God is faithful. And not just because he's saved, he would still be good and faithful even if he didn't. You with me? Right? Now, that, does that mean I'm not, that it's not a heavy time? It is a heavy time. I'm sorry, I'll talk about real stuff. I'll talk about fake stuff. Um, but it, the idea that we can go through heavy things is where our eyes are pointed. And to be still filled with joy, it just doesn't look like we think it looks. Right? You with me? Because there are heavy things in this world. There are hard things in this world. There are real things that we go through. And the reality is that God, we have to keep our eyes focused on, on our Father in Heaven, not on of the circumstances of our time. And it's not about being happy all the time. It's about having this character trait of God and exuding that. Have you met somebody who's going through, I, I knew a guy who, uh, whose wife passed away and they were married for 67 years. And uh, she had just passed. And as you imagine, that was a heavy time. 
But he was like, God's got a plan in this, and he's not done with me. How faithful. Is that joy? I, I think so. It didn't look like smiles. It didn't look like birthday hats and cake. But to me, it felt like joy. Does that make sense? I feel like the room got quiet. I cannot read your faces with all <laughs> I'm like, is anyone understanding what I'm saying? I'm just Can I be done now? <laughs> Karen wins the check. Oh my lord, you guys. This is like the most uncomfortable. I'm socially awkward and introverted. This is the most... I'm sweating buckets, just so you know. Does that make no, you No, I do not need a help. <laughs> is this on the internet? Other questions about joy or whatever? So give me something to talk about. Mikey. Is there a connection between reciprocity and joy? Reciprocity. Okay. Reciprocal, a reciprocal back and forth uh, feeling. I don't know. You I mean, like I said, joy, but, and because you're yes, joy. Yes. Thank you. The question was, is there a connection between reciprocity and joy? Yeah? So well, what I would say, just guessing, the word car, like the root word, just like we do in English, we have root words. The root word car, like I said, can be translated as gift. And that, that hospitality culture, I think that, that's why when we do or when we express joy or it's when we do joy, verb form of joy of car, like when we do that, what happens is that there's a reciprocity aspect to it. Does that make sense? Like we receive joy as we do joy. Which doesn't make sense in English at all. Well, it becomes but, a verb then, right? It becomes a lot of different parts of speech, yes. <laughs> There's another question somebody had. What was it? Judy. So what's the relationship between joy and love? Joy and love. <laughs> well, I would never, you know what? I always bring my Bible in here, like always, because I'm like, I'll have to be, I'll be asked something and then I'll have to look it up. But uh, I'll go off memory and say, in John 15, we talked about on Sunday, um, Jesus talks about joy and, and love during the abide part, right? How are they connected? Do you guys remember? How are they connected between those two in that passage? 15, 1 through 2? Is it on the wall? <laughs> if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. So I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. He says, okay, that joy may be in you. How are those connected? I'm asking everybody, not just Judy. That would be me. <laughs> what do you think? How are they connected? Safe place, even though it's going on the internet. <laughs> if you abide in his love, you will have joy. Okay, what does it mean to abide in his love? Jesus goes on to explain that kind of in multiple ways about, about this doing aspect. And again, it's, about, like, it's not about trying to earn it. Don't, don't read that. I'm not saying that. Abiding is like, I imagine to me, like an offensive lineman. Like, they don't just stand there, right? They're actively, they work out, they, you know, they lift weights, they eat a massive amount of food, so they can be like 400 pounds and run a 4 4 40, okay? And then they hold the line. They hold the line. And abiding takes effort. It's an effort-based practice. It's not a lay down take it easy, rest, drink a Mai Tai, or whatever. Um, it's an active pursuant thing. It's something you actively do. And so I think that's, that, that's my piece, is that it, as we abide, one of the gifts we receive, I guess I, I would go to Galatians 5, where it says that you abide, and, and joy is part of the, the, the uh, gifts of the Spirit there. Does that make sense? Can I go now? <laughs> Okay, so it's a good question. Can I say I don't know? Is that fair? I feel like they could be interconnected. Uh, well, uh, yeah, it's one of those things that, like, the verb form of joy is weird to me. So it feels like a, a, a noun form, and so I get all weirded out. So um, doing love, you're asking me to feel the questions that are hard. Okay, doing love, and from Jesus' perspective, would be being obedient to his commands, right? That's a doing kind of love. 
which is being self-sacrificial, living for others. Um, the doing joy part, I would, I would say that's more like, it, it's like the abide piece where you're doing joy, but it's an active pursuit of faithfulness, not joy, not happiness. Does that make sense? So I would say like, it's, a, it's an active pursuit of being faith, it's the choosing to reorient your eyes on Jesus instead of orienting your eyes on your situation or circumstances. With me? You guys are really trying to get me here. The longer we go, the harder these questions we're going to get, aren't they? You know Sam's in seminary, right? You should have her come up. Right. Laurel? <laughs> expression of his joy to be his children you know like it's it's it's, it's, a, it's not it does take active effort but it's it's more about it's not about the pursuit it's about it's what you are does that make sense like you're created we're created as like the image and likeness of god to be this very thing and so to abide is what we're naturally inclined to do it's what we were made to do and it's the most natural thing in the world except sin right you guys are going to that topic that'll be fun <laughs> Kaylin. When you are, I guess the best way to say it is slipping. Yep. Yeah. You're kind of straying from this. What's like the number one way to get back into it? Like I know, read your Bible, kind of communicate with people who are in the community, but other than those, you know, main ones, what would you say that your main thing is to go I, back? I wouldn't, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat the question. The question is, if you, okay, how many Baptists backslid? Okay, so when you're sliding, okay, backslid, right? Okay, if you fall or like you're finding yourself like having a difficult time and you're focusing on your circumstances and it feels like you're in the dumps and whatnot, okay? Um, how do you get out of it is a question. Um, she asked, what would I do? And like that's, I can't answer that. I can tell you what, what, what I do. But what I, the way I view the spiritual disciplines, and I, and I don't know, again, this is CJ's, I have a Bible up here. I'm not saying the Bible is saying this. I'm saying CJ is saying this. Is the way I read it is that spiritual disciplines are like a box of donuts. And it's sometimes the apple fritters don't, they don't uh, appeal to you. But the maple bars do. Um, and it's okay. And that, that season might change too. Like when I, um, my spiritual disciplines, I have things that I do that are, are very regular. And I do them all the time. But then they shift. And then sometimes I pick up new ones, you know, and I try different things. Um, Something, I, I read Oswald Chambers every day. I don't know if anybody knows him. My endless word is highest. I, I've been doing that for about four years. And it's just something I do every day. And he speaks to me. I feel like he could have wrote it yesterday. I just found out yesterday that uh, he only lived to be 27 years old, which is that wisdom. That wisdom. Dude. Um, but anyway, um, that's a book I do. But um, honestly, if I, if I just want to confess, like, like, you know what I struggle with is this month I'm supposed to take a day. Uh, me and a team of staff members are picking one day to spend with the Lord in silence and solitude just to be with him. Um, and my idea is like, hey, let's do this. And they're like, yeah, let's do this. And they're all signed up and they're already doing it already. And I am like really struggling with that because I feel like it's selfish for me to spend a day with the Lord. And that's hard for me. Like it's hard for me to take that time. Um, so that's something I need to grow in, you know. And I hope that that becomes an easier practice for me. Um, I'm, I tend to be self-reliant. I think that's why God has me going through the season I'm going through. And so he's making me spend more time in prayer and receive more help from people. I mean, I, I just think that there's different spiritual disciplines for different times. Um, I guess I, the only thing I would say is like I would encourage humbleness or humility and uh, and uh, <laughs> not you know the quenching the spirit. You ever hear that phrase? We we're talking about a couple of weeks, but um, to not quench the spirit in other people, like when they come to you and make suggestions. Oftentimes, God speaks to me through other people, and they say, hey, CJ, I'm concerned about you, you know, and, and, and you make a suggestion. Like, Karen's probably going to tell me you need to take a day, and she's right, and I should probably listen. 
I might, but <laughs> the jury's out, but uh, I probably should. Does that make sense? Sorry. I don't have a, I don't think it's answerable of like saying one thing. Oh, me too, totally. I would love that. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, uh, yeah, if you look at all the different spiritual gifts you can get, I was studying that too, like there's a, like they list a bunch of them, but then, you, then what's funny is you start looking at other books like Peter, or, uh, Peter's books, and then you look at James, and like these, the, the, the books that are, or the gifts that are listed, they don't ever list the same ones. They don't repeat them, so it's like they keep adding to them, and so you can't have a, I'm like, I want a list of all the spiritual gifts so I can like build a, a sermon series or something off of it or, or study, this is what it is. Nope, like it's like this and clearly more because they do other th things too. They don't talk about them at all. So it's just interesting. So Unfortunately, the Bible doesn't work like that. Jesus actually wants us to walk with him and not just read his book. <laughs> Keep asking, can I be done? <laughs> This is really weird, you guys. <laughs> Am I this short? I told her like 30 minutes. She was gonna, it's only 30 minutes right now. Oh, really? She was doing a sermon yeah. with the kids. They were like dialed in. So can you demonstrate this joy of your interpretive dance? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> she asked if I could demonstrate this through interpretive dance. <laughs> joy. No. I have a great video. Yeah, so she's dancing in Senegal. Yeah. <laughs> if that ever makes that on the internet, you're going to be in so much trouble. <laughs> I got called out, the story goes, I got called out in Senegal for not dancing because they dance in their church services. They're watching They're watching us tonight, too. Pastor, oh, Pastor Fall is watching us tonight. Is he? Yes. Oh. That's cool. Um, so he knows. He didn't <laughs> dance either, for the record. Uh, just, just for the record. So I'll do it. <laughs> See you. Okay. Anyway, um, the uh, they dance kind of the front. They, they do different kinds of music and stuff, and it's really cool. Um, and everyone kind of comes out and dance, but I'm not. I don't dance, and so that was not my thing. And then the guy preaching was an interpreter who I bumped with um, one trip, and him and I were friends. And he thought it would be really funny to end his sermon with, "We need to play more music and invite Pastor CJ to come up, and he has to dance." And so I had to dance in front of everybody, and that was. You'll never see it. So there you go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I would, uh, yeah, no. That's, that's embarrassing. We can only imagine. Why is this fun <laughs> All right. Can we go now? Okay. Thank you for everything. Uh, we're still figuring out things. Um, I told them I'd be short, but apparently we'll work on our timing. So, um, seriously, uh, in, I hope that this, these boxes, I know it's different, I know base camp's different. But uh, there's some really cool stuff in there, and I hope that you'll like stretch yourself and stretch your family. Um, but I also hope that you don't feel locked in in any way. This is seriously a choose your own adventure thing. Um, my my family is inviting a, a couple people over, and we're just gonna do dinner. And honestly, we're gonna start out with just asking a couple get to know you kind of questions the first couple of weeks, and just very simply kind of turn the turn our eyes toward Jesus through simple questions. And, and it's okay to take some time, and don't don't feel like you have to go. Okay, welcome to group. We're studying the book of Philippians and reading the whole thing today. Like, don't, you don't have to start there. You can start really small. And I think the idea of having your kids participate um, is really cool. And um, like I said, it's a little different way to do base camp, but I think God's going to move in really cool ways. Think about it. We have like 52, or how many groups? I don't know. But we have like a lot of different groups, little churches, little micro expressions of the church all over Kitsap County. How cool is that? What could God do through that? It's pretty crazy. I'm going to pray because we pray when we end things, right? Yeah. Okay, Father God, again, this is prayer number two, three or four tonight. Uh, it's a spiritual discipline. I just thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you for their forgiveness, for me being all weird up here. Thank you for their interest in knowing about your word and seeking to understand and walk with you, Father. Um, there's so many people in this room that I learn from, um, that they teach me in their faithfulness and their walk with you how, how to be joyful. And I just pray that we would lean on one another and that we would grow through this experience, Father. Uh, be with our kids, be with our families, be with our groups, be with base camp. Uh, be with Pastor John when he's down in uh, California, and I just pray that you'd be with our church. Thank you, Father, for all these people, my brothers and sisters. I love them dearly. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Um, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Clap for CJ. Yeah.
everyone. So um, I don't know if you heard Sam. Um, we are walking back down to the other end because Candace is going to be going through the boxes and letting us know what's inside. And then we're just going to pray and we will be there for the night. Um, and Mel, I did see that you put up some suggestions. So we are definitely going to be debriefing after this time um, and uh, working on some improvements for next month. Um, this truly was a trial run for us. So definitely have some bugs to work out in the process. Um, yeah. So we are going to head down walking. We ran. All the peoples are walking. I will do that first. <laughs> Sam has the job of um, wrangling all of us to get down to the other side. <laughs> it's a task. <laughs> <laughs> and keeping CJ on track. <laughs> and making him talk longer than he's comfortable with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Also, if you were um, not here on Sunday, don't forget that Operation Christmas Child is coming soon, and we are a drop-off location, and we um, will start collecting soon. Collection week is November 16th through the 23rd. Lynette. Thank you for your suggestion as well. Um, we will be, I will hand that off um, to the team so that we can make sure that that's better next time. Definitely. Um, it's totally different doing a Facebook Live when you have lots of other people in a big room. <laughs> so thank you for that suggestion. I appreciate it. And for a while I was having to hold, <laughs> hold the iPad up myself, which was um, my arms were weak, <laughs> but thankfully, th thankfully Karen helped me out. So, like I said, we're just going to walk back down to this end. Um, Candace will go through the boxes and then we will be done for the evening. You can pick up, if you missed it, you can pick up your boxes starting anytime um, tomorrow. Getting the kids, so it's a little crazy here. I'll show everybody. Kids are finishing up their game, and parents are collecting kids while we finish up tonight. All right, and if you guys have any suggestions um, for what we can do better next time after we if you're watching the live later um, go ahead and just type those in the comments and we will address all of those as they come and do our best to fix any of these issues that we're having I don't know how they're going to everybody back in here but <laughs> they have a plan for that. It's all backwards. Oh, okay. Is it backwards even like was CJ backwards? <laughs> Okay, interesting. Well, we have lots to discuss <laughs> and figure out. <laughs> so I apologize for that. <laughs> we will see uh, how we can get those issues fixed um, before next time. Thankfully, we have we have um, 
the rest of the month to start working those, but no. So. Uh, okay, thank you. That, that helps as well. So, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Oh, the writing. <laughs> okay. I was like, I don't understand that, but okay. <laughs> I'm not very techy, um, but thank you for explaining that one. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I, seriously, they could not have picked a less technologically savvy person um, to do this than myself. <laughs> I have done Facebook Live before, but it's been mostly stationary. <laughs> but, I was happy to be here with you guys and um, hopefully make you laugh tonight, which I think I did. Okay, Candace is going to start, so I'm going to turn you around. Oh, there we go. Hey guys, can you please take a seat so we can go over our boxes? This is kind of the fun part.
we have both of your emails again? I gave them earlier, but I want to double check that it was correct. Okay, mine is Candice at faithadventure.com, and my name is spelled C A N D I C E, and then it's Sam at faithadventure.com. Yes, S A M. I don't know if you can spell Sam any other way. I mean, maybe. Any other questions? All right, I'm going to have here. Oh, sorry. Candice, so, Candice, can you can you repeat the question, oh, please? Thank she you. was asking. Tish was asking whether or not um, some of the things seem to need some extra stuff beforehand. So should they look through it, you know, beforehand to see what's needed? Um, I would look through the whole entire field guide and then go through and decide how you want to do it. Um, as an example, um, our track group, um, the eighth and ninth grade girls. We're looking at, um, we're going to look at the field guide and decide some of the things we might mix and match. So there's different things that you can do in each and mix and match them to how it's going to fit your group best. So I would look through and see how you want to do it and what weeks work best for your group. Because things like the ding dong ditch, you're going to want to get more stuff for, for being pumping, pumpkining people. I don't know why I think that. Um, you'll want to get some items for that, but that might be something that you're like, hey, we want to do that, you know, this the third week, or we might want to do it the second week, depending on how you're going to so. Any other questions? All right. I'm going to have Karen come pray for us, and then we'll start handing out boxes.